welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today I'm going to be making a beer soap with autumn in mind. I found this beer Oktoberfest and I just I love the color of the label. It just looked really appealing to me and of course with autumn coming it's pumpkin everything right. So this is going to be a beer and pumpkin soap. I will use pumpkin puree and put in the oils and then I will distill down. I'm using two bottles of this beer. I'm going to distill it down, get the carbonation off, boil off some of the alcohol and that will be my lye water solution. Um, so the beer, the pumpkin, what else do I have? The fragrance. Um, I got this. It's called Pumpkin Cider from Wholesale Supplies Plus, and this is wonderful. And, you know, cider made me think of, I don't know, beer. I guess you can have a hard cider and a not hard cider. <laughs> anyway, that's the fragrance that I'm going to be using today, and it smells fantastic. Uh, it got good reviews. It does have a little vanillin and discolor, so I will be using titanium dioxide in the body of the soap, and today I want to do soap layers. So what I plan on doing is I will put the pumpkin in the oils, get that blended up, and then I have my beautiful organic turmeric powder, which I just think is, well, it's wonderful for your skin, but it's a gorgeous color. It doesn't stay this beautiful yellow. Uh, it definitely oranges and browns up in soap, but that's perfect for pumpkin, right? So turmeric is gonna be the color and I wanna do a layer and then a mica line. So I will be using this chocolate brown mica and sprinkle down and then a little TD, lighten it up and do the next layer. And then, so I just want this to be, you know, I was thinking of masculine and soap with the beer in there and I didn't want to do swirls so we're doing layers today <laughs> um, this is gonna be wonderful it smells great in the soap studio I tell you what autumn is my favorite I love it sweater weather <laughs> um, what else okay so with the pumpkin and the beer I will keep an eye on this soap because it can overheat so I'm just gonna be cautious, come down in the studio. It's cool in my soap studio. Uh, I will put a lid on this to start because I do want gel phase, but I will keep an eye on it and uh, make sure it doesn't overheat with those ingredients in there. So let me get everything pulled together, get my hair pulled back, and let's come back and make some Oktoberfest beer soap. All right, I've got my fun Oktoberfest beers here, uncapped, and these are cold from the fridge, but I'm going to put them in my saucepan, bring them up to a simmer, and I'll just stir it occasionally, and I'm trying to get all the carbonation out of this and get it to fizz down and steam off some of the alcohol. Um, you can, I've seen soapers add beer directly to their soap at Trace, and it's worked out fine for them. Um, and that's great uh, if you want to use a tiny bit of beer. I want to use these two whole beers, so I'm going to, I want it to be a large portion of my liquid in the soap. So this is how I'm approaching it. This is what I'm comfortable doing, but there are other ways to do it. If you research around, you might like to try something different, but this is how I'm doing it. Anyway, yum. Maybe when I get all done soaping, I'll have one of these. <laughs> all right, let me get this all simmered up and then we'll get moving forward with the rest of the soap. All right, so after I simmered down two 12 ounce bottles of beer, I ended up with about 16 ounces of distilled down beer. And then I topped it off with distilled water and this has my silk fibers in there. So I'm cooling it off because of course the beer was hot from you know simmering and I'm kind of rushing things along. So I'm gonna add my lye very slowly to this beer solution in the ice bath and hopefully it won't you know react and get all weird just gonna add it slowly I think I boiled off all the alcohol I used my whisk to stir it until it quit you know when you heat it and you stir it and it would foam up and so I just did that until it quit rising up when I stirred it so just a warning uh, when you add lye to beer, it doesn't smell great, <laughs> but that's okay. It will go away, that funky sort of strange, you know, obviously lye and water doesn't smell great either, but something about the beer lye mixture just doesn't smell very good, but that goes away. So don't let that throw you off if you want to make a beer soap. Um, so I'm just proceeding cautiously and I'm going to let this cool and then we will come back and uh, get going on the rest of the soap. All right, well the beer lye solution is cooling. Let's add the additives into the oils and butters here. So I have got my pumpkin that I have water discounted from the beer lye solution to make room for this. 
lovely organic pumpkin puree. Um, and again, when you use a fruit or a vegetable puree in a soap, you want to water discount for it. You treat it as part of your liquid. And then another word on pumpkin is that it can overheat pretty well. <laughs> I don't know why it overheats more than sugar, but for me it has. So um, just I'm gonna keep an eye on this soap tonight because of the beer and the pumpkin. Um, so let's go on here. I've got my kale and clay because I love it. This is a two tablespoon scoop and my colloidal oats because I think it's wonderful. So two tablespoons of each of those. I'm going to get this all blended in here and uh, just let the dry ingredients absorb and then uh, just wait for that beer and lye solution to cool. Time to get going with the first layer. So here is my beer lye solution and I did add a little bit of titanium dioxide in here just because this fragrance does have a little vanillin in it and uh, I want to keep the colors you know hopefully where we can see the different layers. So again this has the distilled down beer, a little bit of distilled water to bring it up to the volume I needed. It's got tussa silk fibers, sodium hydroxide, and some sodium lactate to help unmolding this. So I am going to hand stir this in because I already have my fragrance in here um, rather than try to split it off. And uh, it's going to be, it's a little risky. Um, a pumpkin scented fragrances can tend to go fast and the pumpkin's in there to overheat. So I'm hoping this doesn't bite me. Let's give it a try. <laughs> but it, for me, it's easier than trying to split off the fragrance into three different portions. So with all that being said, I'm going to hand stir this to emulsion split off for that first turmeric layer and then uh, get that down in the mold and we'll stick blend that to bring it up to a trace as needed if that's if everything's behaving if not we're just going to throw this down in the mold and call it a wonderful soap with all the great stuff in it <laughs> so you can see it's starting to caramelize that's the beer the pumpkin all reacting with the lye it's all wonderful doing its chemical business love chemistry fascinating so there's a little emulsion here I'm gonna go I'm not gonna dilly-dally I'm gonna go ahead and split off for our first layer
figured I'd show you what I look for when I'm watching something. See that little crack right there? That means that this is getting very hot. If, I mean, I can feel it too. The heat is radiating. So um, it's definitely gonna go through gel phase, but because of that little crack right there, I'm taking the lid off and I moved it to a new surface because I have a stainless steel table here and it will get warm over time. So if you just scoot it over to a cool spot. So anyway, when I say I'm watching it, that's what I'm looking for. That little crack right there is a telltale sign of this heating up and what happens is it kind of swells up in the middle. So lid off, I'm gonna just keep an eye on it and if it gets any more hot from what it is now, I will put it in the refrigerator. So there it is going through its uh, business and we'll be back tomorrow. All right, it's the next morning and I cannot wait to get in here and look at this soap and see how those layers came out. And again, it did heat up last night, but I came down, took the lid off and had no other issues after that. I did uh, steam the top this morning, so it's got a nice little gloss to it. If you hear the background noise, just uh, pardon that. I'm having a new door installed in my front door. So we're gonna ignore the construction noise and cut this soap. Let's get in here and see how those layers came out. So I'm going to show you how, look how pretty the inside of these loaves are. I'm loving it. But when I do a mica thing, it can splash up on the side of the mold and it makes it smudgy like this. And I'll show you how to clean that up. Take a damp, clean rag. And this is stained. I already did one loaf, um, but this is clean and it's just a little bit damp. And you literally can come in and wipe off the mica smudge on the side of the loaf and clean it up. And I just think it looks a little pretty and it's soap sparing. You could put this in a shaver um, uh, and shave down the sides, but then you lose all that wonderful soap. So I find the damp rag better. And there, it just cleans it up. And I'm gonna let this dry and um, let's see. It's a little on the end here. I'll clean up and show you. Just tidies it up. There it is. Totally not necessary, but I think it makes it look prettier. And so I'm gonna let this dry and then we'll get to cutting into bars. All right, back with the lovely Olga here and let's get these wonderful loaves cut into bars. I am loving the layers and the colors. There's the top. Um, I think we will have a little discoloration, but I don't think much. You can see around the rim there at the top here. I don't think it's gonna be a lot, so anyway. Let's get this into the cutter. I'm so happy with how those colors came out and I'm glad I caught it in time when it started overheating. The fragrance today is very light, um, so I'm hoping it'll bounce back. Let's get that out there and there they are. I am so happy with how these came out. The beer and the pumpkin are gonna make for wonderful lather on these. So I'm very, very pleased about that. Again, pardon the construction noise. <laughs> Part and parcel of having a home studio, right? So happy. Oh, these are making me feel like fall. And uh, masculine, the beer, you know, I think these would be great for anybody. It's like, it's like skin food, isn't it? Loving it.